simultaneously can be fatal for the workers. They even have to stand on non-conductive mats. In a battery area, it is very important to keep our workers safe. Here, workers assemble the high-performance lithium-ion battery cells into 22 modules. They have three to four times the energy density of a lead-acid battery. The modules are then bolted to a steel frame, and the connecting wires are gathered with dozens of harnesses to make sure nothing moves. There's just no fooling around with the battery. There are so many supporting systems. For example, the battery is consists of uh, more than 300 small parts. Uh, those parts must be systematically quite stiff in order to protect the battery itself. The battery is hooked up to the computer brain of the car, which stops it from overcharging and shuts it down on the first sign of trouble. The battery pack is kept cooled or heated by circulating air from the car's climate control system and the entire unit is waterproofed with a rubber seal in a resin shell. Altogether, nearly 150 bolts hold the battery pack together with layers of protection for safety. The value of the battery alone is nearly half the cost of the car. Innovations like these make the iMEV possible. It's all assembled in Mizushima, a very deceptive looking factory from the outside, originally founded in 1943. Uh, during this stage, according to our history, more than 200 uh, fighter planes were manufactured. In fact, the road through the facility used to be a runway. But inside, it's all about the latest technology on a multi-vehicle production line. The goal was to bring the EVs to the mass production level, not only for the high performance, but also for the safety and uh, competitive uh, costs to be attained. Using 4,000 metric tons of pressure, renewable sheet metal is turned into car parts. Four consecutive stamping machines cut, mold, and detail the metal. Remaining bits and pieces are troughed and sent back to the forge to make new parts for the line. Temperatures here run to 1,500 degrees Celsius. Hundred percent of our steel or iron scrap from the stamping shop or the machining shop is going to our foundry shop in-house. There are 2,100 welding points on the IMEV, over 150 more than the gas-powered version made here. Only 18 welds are made by hand, a process that will be turned over to robots when demand for the IMEV jumps. 123 state-of-the-art robots flip the frame up to 180 degrees to optimize the welding. Fifty-four different processes are involved, and the precision is exact. Once the welds are done, the bare metal doors are attached. The anti-rust dip, charged with 275 volts to make it adhere to the metal, forces the rust proofing to seep into every part of the frame. Then, workers paint the inside of the frame while robots take over the exterior. After the paint is dried, it's inspected in a tunnel of light for even the smallest flaw. The assembly line is 628 meters long. 250 workers have 68 seconds to complete each task. Every car spends just two and a half hours on the line start to finish. Thank uh, you. When I first began work on the electric car in 1994, I couldn't imagine that we would get to the point of mass production. While producing one of the world's most energy-efficient, fully electric cars, Mitsubishi has also made a commitment to going green in everything it does. We have an initiative called the Mitsubishi Group Environmental Vision 2020. And through that vision, uh, we also have a numeric target to reduce 50% of the CO2 emission by 2020. And we are very committed to that. 
With zero tailpipe emissions and the equivalent of 1.9 liters per 100 kilometers or 126 miles per gallon in city driving, it's the greenest car in its class. On the assembly line, the car's unique technology and special features have to be integrated right alongside the gas-powered vehicles. The whole process is painstakingly detailed, especially here in an exclusive subsection off the main line where two of the plant's most skilled workers put together the other critical EV components by hand. The electric motor, the transmission, the onboard charger, and the inverter or motor control unit. Unlike the gasoline engine in a normal car, we were able to make the onboard motor more compact. This is a state-of-the-art, high-performance, permanent magnetic synchronous electric motor. It has a maximum output of 49 kilowatts or 66 horsepower and an impressive torque of 196 newton meters or 145 foot-pounds. That's more than double the torque available in most subcompact gas cars. With electric, it's instantaneous. When you step on the pedal, the current goes right to the motor and the car takes off like a shot. And surprisingly, there's only one gear, iMeave's single gear transmission that drives the car both ahead and in reverse. The motor's high torque output and ability to spin at 8,000 RPM means you don't need gear changes. When it's put in reverse, the motor spins backwards, in drive, forwards, powering the wheels at the same rate as the motor. When it's done, the entire unit is sent by robot courier back to the assembly line to be attached to the rear suspension, then lifted and inserted into the car. The lithium-ion battery pack is lifted and inserted into the well crib frame, a heavily fortified platform that will protect the battery against any kind of impact. We developed a lot of new parts, and this costs an awful lot of money and time. Development was billions of yen, but for mass production, I think it cost even more than that. After a quick spin up the elevator, the iMeave is put through a very thorough inspection checklist. To be exact, 919 items. The car is checked for vibrations, headlights, turn signals, brake testing, stability control. A computer diagnostic is run to make sure the brains of the car are alert. An undercarriage review is carried out, critical for battery protection. There's even a typhoon-equivalent fluorescent water bath to check for leaks. After a short track test and a final visual inspection, the cars are wrapped in plastic and readied for shipment. From the moment they arrived on the streets in North America, these cars have been turning heads. I was at the New York Auto Show. That was when we first showed the electric vehicle. I was doing lots of test drives there. Every time I stopped at the traffic light, um, th these yellow cab drivers are asking me to pull down the window and they're saying, hey, that's a cool car. Converts to the electric vehicle realize the upside is huge. Wicked torque, acceleration, and the silent drive. And most of all, never ever having to fill up with gasoline again. Thanks to research and development, the innovation doesn't stop here. Imagine a world where your car powers your coffee maker to start its morning brew. With a look to the future, the research and development teams at Mitsubishi are working to make the electric car a solution in the demand for consistent, affordable electricity. At Mitsubishi's Research and Development Center in Okazaki, Japan, they've constructed M-Tech Labo, this test facility is evaluating the practicality and effectiveness of using this electric car's giant rechargeable lithium ion battery pack to stabilize the power grid. It's called smart grid technology. MTech Labo's main purpose is experimental. MTech Labo supplies solar power and also EV power to this building at peak time. 
Here's how it works. MTech Labo has five iMeV fully electric cars hooked up to these docks, which funnel energy in and out of the cars. There are also five battery packs identical to the ones in the cars located inside, hooked up to computers and controllers. At times of low demand, the cars and batteries are charged. They're also charged by alternative methods such as solar and wind generators attached to the building. Then at high peak times, when the grid is most expensive and strained, the stored electricity supplies energy to the Mitsubishi Okazaki facility instead of taking it out of the grid. This facility, this facility has the capacity of 20% of the total energy supply of this building. It's not a complete solution yet. Currently, the 16 kilowatt hour iMeV battery would only be able to supply about half a day's worth of energy to a typical North American household. But with a DC-AC converter already available to Japanese consumers, it could power your home during power outages, rolling blackouts or emergencies, take pressure off the grid in times of high demand, and ultimately lower your hydro bill, all thanks to your sporty little wheels. There's no way any car maker can reach everyone one test drive at a time. They need to hit the market with a bang. That's the intent behind the electric race car being built. Mitsubishi is showcasing electric cars and changing perceptions surrounding this technology once and for all. We're used to having rallies with gasoline cars. We have won the Dakar multiple times and scored well in the World Rally. I believe many people have an image of Mitsubishi when they think of rallies. However, now that we have entered the age of electric car mass production, I believe entering our new cars in these rallies would be the ultimate experiment. Hiroshi Masuoka is intimately involved in the design, building and testing of the iMeV Evolution. He's a two-time champion of the punishing Dakar Rally, posting consecutive overall victories in the event in 2002 and 2003. So Masaoka-san has been with Mitsubishi Motors for a long time. Uh, his experience has been uh, mostly in uh, truck off-road racing, and it is uh, crucial to have high driving skills. The iMeV Evolution is loaded with three finely tuned stock electric motors, two in the back and one in the front. Each motor kicks out 80 kilowatts of power, giving a combined output of 240 kilowatts. They get their juice from a 35 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack, nearly double the 16 kilowatt hour battery in the regular IME. Another advantage of the electric car is that the battery is below the floor. For iMeV Evolution, it is actually placed on the sides, lowering the car's center of gravity quite a bit. This position of battery enables stable cornering. The key to an effective performance prototype is using the benefits of the electric car to knock your socks off. Electric vehicles gives uh, instant torque when you get onto the throttle versus gas. You have to wait until when the RPM picks up. So with the, most of the road being an uphill and also having a lot of tight corner where you have to accelerate fast, electric car actually has a huge benefit being able to run up the hill very quickly. It's a great fit for racing because you have to decelerate and accelerate around the course's curves. It's a question of how you can best utilize the pros of the electric car for an even better driving experience. This will be crucial in the Pikes Peak Hill Climb in the Rocky Mountains. Drivers will negotiate over 150 hairpin turns in the race to the 4,300 meter summit. One of the great points about electric vehicles is that they can run the entire course without being affected by high altitude or extreme heat. It's the first practice session just days ahead of the event. Drivers are getting their first taste of the track. From driver perspective, it is very, very challenging track. Uh, obviously, bottom portion, you have the trees and you don't see the exit line, so you have to kind of guess where you're at. There's 156 turns that you have to memorize, and sometimes turns look similar, and when you go up the hill with less air, you start losing the focus. 
For Mitsubishi, we're certainly gunning for the win in electric division. Uh, overall, I think we want to continue to do this program to have the outright record at Pikes Peak. But for this year, being a learning year, we want to do a very well in competitive results, which we're very confident that we could establish. Masuoka is pushing the IMEV evolution and himself to the limits. That's when it happens. This corner is actually known to be the very most uh, dangerous turns as far as driver missing the turn and flying off into the ditch. Uh, he broke too late and then he couldn't make the turns. To be honest, uh, when we got the car, we did not think we could repair it. But you know, the all the engineers came to look at it and they said, hey, we're not giving up. Race day. A bit bruised, but determined. The Mitsubishi team, with Masuoka behind the wheel of the IMEV Evolution, hit the track. We had uh, three nights of uh, not sleeping, working 24-7, and fortunately we were able to rebuild the car. And uh, when we tested the car, Masuoka-san said it's as good as or better than it was before, so we're very pleased. Masuoka achieved second place in the electric category and eighth place in the race overall. Up against automakers and drivers with years of Pikes Peak experience, it's an unbelievable showing. Our team actually spent four days with almost no rest fixing the car. And I'm just so happy that I was able to compete in the finals. I'm really grateful to everyone. Thank you. On the track and in the streets, the IMEV has arrived. It's coming. This is going to be the car of the future. There's no doubt about it. In urban areas, I think it will definitely make a splash. I think electric vehicles are only going to build on momentum. Electric cars do not emit carbon dioxide, decrease dependence on oil, and are extremely quiet. We believe they are the ultimate zero emissions vehicle and are extremely important to automobile technology. I think it's just the, it's the coming wave. 